Uh, we're going to do a little bit at a time when we describe absolute value functions so that you don't get overwhelmed. So these notes are not only for today, these are for today and tomorrow. And I want you guys to take really good notes because um, I'm going to start grading your notes periodically. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm going to start grading your notes periodically. Uh, so make sure that you are taking good notes. If I write it down, you write it down. That's the expectation. That's what I'm looking for when I grade them, OK? Uh, if you are absent someday, you are still held accountable for the notes because I record everything and I put it online, OK? That means you can still get the notes even if you're gone. All right, so the first two things that we're going to look at finding today is the domain and the range. So the domain is all of the x values, which is all of the inputs. The domain is all of the x values or the inputs that are defined in the function. This means that you can plug a value you can plug a value into the function and get an answer. You can plug a value into the function and get an answer. Please stop writing on his hand and write on your notes instead. Thank you. Uh, the range is all of the y values, which is all of the outputs that are defined in the function. Basically, this is the answer that you get after you plug a value in. So off to the side in the margin of the paper, we're going to summarize this. We're going to say domain is x values, range is y values. That's all you have to remember. Domain is x values, range is y values. Okay, uh, for this next part, I have some example problems for us, and we can uh, kind of color code our notes if you have some colors. If you don't, that's fine. Um, for the domain, I'm going to look um, at my, my picture of the graph. And since the domain has to do with x values, I'm going to look at this graph from the left side to the right side. So here's the left side of the graph. Here's the right side of the graph. I can see uh, that all through the graph, all these values are being used because I can see the graph goes there. So for this, if I think about the left side of the graph, I can see that arrow. I want to think about what number a left arrow represents? Negative. Negative. Anyone know the number that is represented by a left arrow? It's negative infinity. Negative infinity is what is represented by a left arrow. All right, and Allison, I need your earbuds to go in prison, please. Since you didn't take them out, thank you. Uh, a right arrow represents positive infinity. Thank you. So that means that for our domain, if our domain is our x values from left to right, our domain is going to be all the numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. It uses every single number we can think of. Okay. The range is the y values. That's all the y values from the bottom of the graph to the top of the graph. I'm going to switch colors so it makes it easier to see this. So the bottom of the graph, now I can see, is two arrows that are going down. And then the top of the graph is the vertex. So if the bottom of the graph is two arrows going down, then what number represents arrows going down? Infinity, but what kind of infinity if they're going down? Negative infinity. So arrows going down is a negative infinity. And then up, we don't go up forever. This is not an arrow. This is the vertex. 
So what number do you see for the y value at the vertex? Two. Dose. Okay. So for the range, the graph goes down forever, but when it goes up, it stops at two. So we're going to say negative infinity for the bottom and two for the top. Now, whenever we answer these questions, uh, anytime you have a number that you can't actually touch with your finger, like if you said, Miss Rice, I want you to find infinity on the graph and touch it with your finger, I couldn't do that. I can see an arrow which represents infinity, but this is not actually at infinity, it's actually at eight. Uh, this is not actually at infinity, it's actually at negative seven. So these are not actually at that number, they just represent infinity. Uh, so anytime it's not actually at the number, I'm gonna put a parenthesis. But if I can get to that number, if that's a number where I say, uh, hey, show me where the two is, and you can say, hey, the two is right here, I can put my finger on it. Anytime you can actually get to that number, you put a bracket. Yeah, you can make it into a bracket. Okay, so let's look at the next one. So remember, domain is the x value, so we're gonna look at this graph. We're gonna look at the left side, and we're gonna look at the right side. So when you look at the far left side, what number do you see? Negative, Negative infinity, it's an arrow going to the left. When you look at the far right side, what do you see? An arrow to the right. That's an infinity, yep. Okay, so the domain, the left to right for this graph is just negative infinity to positive infinity. It's got parentheses because when I touch this part of the graph, I'm not actually touching negative infinity, I'm touching negative eight. When I'm touching this part of the graph, I'm not actually touching positive infinity, I'm touching positive eight. So since I can't touch those numbers, I put parentheses there. Okay, now let's look at the bottom of the graph and the top of the graph. The very bottom of the graph is right here at the vertex. The very top of the graph is both of these arrows that go up forever. So what number do we use for arrows that are going up forever? We use infinity for arrows that are going up forever, okay? Uh, what number do we use for this vertex? Negative 7. And why did we use negative 7 for the vertex and not negative 4, even though that is part of the vertex? Because we're using the y value since the range has to do with the y value. Okay. So for the range, we use the bottom number first and then the top number. We always go from small to big, so the bottom to the top. So the first number we write down is a negative 7. The second number we write down is a positive infinity. Is negative 7 a number that you can put your finger on? Yes, it's right there. I can find it, I can put my finger on it. And then infinity, if I look at these, can I touch positive infinity? No. no. I'm touching this one. I'm touching actually negative 2. This one is actually touching like a negative 5, so not actually a positive infinity. Okay. So that is how you find the domain and the range. And if you guys notice, the domain was actually the same on both of these graphs. Do you think the domain would ever be different for a V-shaped graph? Yeah, yeah, unless they decided to like make it a V but not have an arrow or something. Yeah, yeah, good call. All right, um, do you guys want to practice the transformations on these? Can anyone see what the transformation is on this first one? We got a negative in the front. So reflect over X, you can see that that V is upside down. Reflect over X, what else? Right three, up two. Okay, so this reflected over x. We're just doing some extra for this first example. Reflect over x, right three, up two. Okay, 
Uh, now, if we look at the second example, can you see what the transformations are for the second example? So it moves to the left. What does the one half do again? Not as compress. So it's vertically compressed. It goes to the left four and down seven. Okay, so vertically compressed. It's going to be half as tall as it normally is. Left four. Uh, this is the second example. Vertically compressed, left four, and down seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, on Friday, um, we talked about the vertex. The vertex is just the point where the graph switches directions. So the graph goes up, hits the vertex, comes back down. The graph goes down, hits the vertex, comes back up. So this part of the graph right here where the graph goes up, this is called the increasing portion of the graph because it's going up and then it hits the vertex and then it comes back down. So we say that the vertex definition is that it's the point where the graph switches from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. Increasing to decreasing. Or vice versa, because it could be decreasing to increasing. We often think of the vertex as the middle of the graph or the starting point. That's why a lot of people like to find the vertex, because it's an important point for each of our graphs that we do. Uh, some of the graphs that we will study in Math 3 do not have a vertex, but there's going to be a point that seems similar to that. It's going to seem like the middle of the graph, or it's going to seem like a good starting point. And we're going to call this the locator point. Let me get the phone real quick. So this is the part that we did on Friday where we learned that the vertex... Uh, or the locator point when we get to units that call it that instead of a vertex, that this is found using the H and the K. And what I mean by that is if we go back up to this equation, if I wanted to know what the vertex was, what would I say the vertex is for example one? Positive three, positive two. What would I say the vertex is for example two? negative 4 and negative 7. Okay, so I'm going to write from our notes on Friday, we had y equals a times x minus h plus k, and so the vertex is h comma k, and if we notice here, the h is the opposite sign. The h is the opposite sign. All right, how are your brains feeling so far? Are you absorbing? Are you feeling overwhelmed at all? Feeling pretty good? Sinking in? Okay, we're going to turn the page, we're going to learn two more words, and then we're going to stop for today. 
So the next two words that we're going to learn are increasing and decreasing. So the increasing interval is the x values that make the function. Now when we read, you don't have to flip back, but I'm going to flip back. Over here, we would say the function equals this. The function equals this. So if I'm saying the function equals this stuff, then I'm calling y the function. The function equals this stuff. I'm calling y the function. So in math, whenever they refer to the function, they're always actually talking about the y coordinate, which sounds weird, but it's what they mean. So up here in our definition, whenever they say the function, they actually mean the y value. So the increasing intervals are the x values that make the y values get bigger or the y values go up. The decreasing interval are the x values that make the function, aka the y value, go down. So for us, as far as what we're going to see when we actually look at the graph, the increasing interval is where the graph slants up to the right. And the decreasing interval is where the graph slants down to the right. Slants up to the right, slants down to the right. So when we learned about domain and range, we learned that domain had to do with the x values, range had to do with the y values, that when we put our answers down, we used x values for domain, we used y values for range. Here, both of these say x values, x values. So here we're going to answer with x values for both of these. And that's important to remember. All right, so here's the easiest way that I think we can do these problems. I've done this for all of my students for years now. I always go to the very left side of the picture and I put a stick figure on the picture because the stick figure helps you to do the problem using your common sense judgment. Okay, so the stick figure is at a left arrow. What number is a left arrow? Negative, Negative. infinity. Okay, stick figures at a left arrow. The left arrow is negative infinity. If my stick figure starts walking, is he walking uphill or downhill? Down. Downhill. So if he's walking downhill, that means he is decreasing. Okay, my stick figure gets to the vertex. What is the x value of the vertex? It's zero. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it's zero. Right here in the middle, it's zero. And if we need to rewrite the equation with the zero in there to make it easier, we can do that. There's the rewritten version of the equation so we can see the number inside. Okay, so the x value of the vertex is zero. All right, now once the uh, stick figure gets down here and he keeps walking, is he walking uphill or downhill to get to the other side? Uphill. So that means he is now increasing. And then as he increases, uh, he continues and he gets to this arrow, and what number is this arrow? It is infinity. Okay, so to write the answer for the increasing interval, we just have to look at the word increasing, and we have to write down the numbers on either side of that word. So the increasing interval is zero infinity. And for this one, we put a bracket if the stick figure 
is actually walking uphill at that number. Like if we can see that he's walking uphill right there. So infinity always gets a parenthesis because infinity we can just never, we can never see infinity. We can never see like, okay, right here, that's the number infinity. I can see it and I can see he's walking uphill there. No, I can never see him walking uphill at infinity. But right here at zero, if the stick figure is standing there, right here at zero, is he walking uphill at that moment? No, he's kind of like in between, right? He's not downhill, but he's also not uphill. So we actually put a parenthesis there. He's not downhill, but he's not uphill. Okay, now for the de decreasing interval, we look at the word decreasing, it's right there. We look to see what the numbers are. Negative infinity, zero. So I write those two numbers. Infinity always gets a parenthesis. And then I look, the stick figure would be standing right here. Is he actively walking downhill when he is standing there? No, no he's kind of in between. He's not uphill, he's not downhill, he's in between. That gets a parenthesis. Okay, so that's the hardest part of what we've done today. How do you feel about it? It's kind of weird. Do you, do you understand how we filled out the picture? Okay, let's try the next one. All right, so we're gonna put our stick figure on the far left of the picture. And how should I start filling out my picture? He's, right, he's increasing. Why is he increasing? He's going uphill. He's going uphill. What number is he at right now? Infinity, infinity or negative infinity? Negative, negative infinity because this is a left arrow. Okay. He increases all the way to the vertex. Negative 5. Okay. So the x coordinate of the vertex is negative 5. He gets up to the top of the vertex. And then what does he do? Then he decreases because he starts walking downhill. Okay, so now he's decreasing. And then we've got a right arrow. So if you were thinking of it as a down arrow, then you would be right, it is negative infinity. But we're not thinking of this as up and down because that would be y values. We're thinking of this as left and right, so this is a right arrow, so it's positive infinity. Does that make sense? Yeah. So remember, we go, we go back to this and we say, I'm not thinking of this as a y value, I'm thinking of this as an x value. So I'm not worried about the fact that, oh, that arrow goes down. I don't care that it goes down. I'm thinking of it as an x value. I'm only worried about the fact that the arrow goes to the right. Uh, Does that make sense? Because it's x values. I don't care that the arrow goes down. I'm ignoring that. I only am worried that it goes to the right. So since this is a right arrow, I say positive infinity. Does that make sense? So your arrows are always going to be negative infinity, positive infinity. Left, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do negative infinity, negative 5. We'll just do left to right. Negative infinity, negative 5. Negative infinity, negative 5. And if we look at the negative 5, when he's standing right here at the top, is he actively walking uphill when he's standing at the top? No. Okay. Uh, for decreasing, okay. And then when he's standing at the top, is he actively walking uphill when he's standing at the top? No, he's at that in-between place. Okay, there's our answers. We are done with our notes. How do we feel? Okay, so at this point, we know a few things about absolute value functions. We can describe the transformations. We can find the vertex. We can find the domain and the range, the left and right numbers, the up and down numbers. And then we can say when the stick figure is walking up or walking down. We feel good about finding those things? It's like four things we can find? Okay. So on today's assignment, we're going to be practicing those four things. All right. The first question is down here. They gave you a bunch of graphs to look at. 
The first question says, which of the graphs have been shifted to the left three? Which of the graphs have been shifted to the left three? Well, B has been shifted to the right three, but not the left. Right, one, two, three. Okay. Okay, C has, been gone, has gone to the left three, okay. Okay. D has gone to the left three. Just C and D? Okay. Number two, which of the graphs have been shifted up? A has gone up. B has gone up. C has gone up. D has gone up. Okay, so we have A, B, C, D. Uh, not E, not F, G, H, I. Okay, a lot of them, huh? G, H, I. All right, which graphs have been reflected over the x-axis? B, did you say B, B? B, C, I. Okay. All right. Everyone kind of see how this is working? All right, so we're looking at the pictures of the graphs and we're kind of interpreting uh, the questions using the pictures to help us kind of understand the transformations. It's just another way of learning what the transformations mean. Uh, if you run into a question that feels confusing, you're not sure how to look at the graph and figure it out, just let me know, I will help you, okay? Not all of the problems today are based on the graphs. There are some of them that uh, give you some equations um, and ask you to answer questions on the equations. Once you get there, if you're confused, let me know and I can help you guys with those as well, okay? Once you get to problem 19, 19 through 24, you are more than welcome to get your uh, Chromebook out and, and graph these on Desmos to see what the graphs look like, okay? All right. Go ahead and get started with those.